Does anybody have um, a suggestion about how we might be able to um, uh, bring a surface into Grasshopper? And I see we have a question here asking, how do we get the center points in Rhino? What I did was I used the point command, and I turned on my object snaps for center, and I just snapped um, to the center. You can see by mousing over here, I have a center snap that I'm using. All righty. Well, the first step is, is to make a surface, right? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to just make, um, I'm going to draw two lines. Actually, I'm going to draw one line, and then I'm going to say, edit, rebuild. <clears throat> I'm going to rebuild this line with seven control points and a degree three. Give you guys a second to, uh, to knock that out. <clears throat> And I'll hit OK. Now what this will allow me to do is have an additional set of control points to be able to manipulate my curve. I'll go ahead and make a copy of this curve to the right. Now depending upon how you want to set this up, um, I'm going to go ahead and just make a curve container right here for my params. I'll go ahead and set multiple curves, so one and two. And I will use my surface freeform loft. to get my loft. Now if I turn on my control points, you can see that now I can go ahead and edit this and have my, uh, my loft update. All right. Now, now that I have my surface, I know that this is going to go into S. So this is my target surface. And then it's asking, what is the surface space in the U extent? So somehow we have to take our surface and divide it up so that we can tell um, this component how many times to put our object, our component, onto the surface. Now to be able to do that, we have to remember that a surface is a two-dimensional parametric space. And, or parameter space, rather. And if we go to math, and we go to domain, you can see that there is a component here that's called divide domain square. What that does is it takes and divides the two-dimensional domain into equal segments. And you'll see, just like the inputs here, U and V, we have U and V. And if we look at the icon, we have something that looks like a surface that's divided into a grid. And really, you know, if you think conceptually about what we're trying to achieve, that's exactly it. We want to take our surface, and we want to divide it some number of times in U and V. Now, I'm going to create a slider, and I'll show you guys a nice little trick. I'm going to, I'm going to just double-click here on the canvas. I'm going to say 1 less than 10 less than 20. This is going to create an integer slider where the lower value is 1, the upper value is 20, but the current value is 10. I'll right click on its name and call that U. I'm going to copy and paste this down and call this B. The idea being that we'll use two sliders to control how many of our components we transform to the surface. 
Now, if you notice, we've divided this up into U and B, but here it's asking for U and B, but we only have one output. And if we look at a panel, we can see that we have both the U and the V here. So let's go back to our domain, and you'll see that we have under the domains, divide domain squared, we have domain squared components. So what this is going to do is allow us to take our output and split it into U and B. So essentially what it's doing is just taking our list, which we had here every step, 0 uh, to 1.125 1 V, 0 to 0 0.4, and it's really just um, splitting that in half. So we have our zero, you know, all of our, our U's here and um, all of our V's out of the V. So we can just take that directly into U and V. So here we're dividing our surface or subdividing our surface. And then here we're isolating U and V. I'm going to go ahead and save. And uh, this is our surface morph. And as you guys have been doing before, I'm going to just do hyphen W. Save. And the last thing is we just needed to find W. And W is really just going to be a number slider that allows us to control height. Now over here, I'm just going to right click on my component. I'm going to say clear. I'm just going to reset this with just my, uh, my mesh in here. And, uh, and we can see by turning off some previews um, that we have all of our geometry morphed. And if I change the number of sliders that I have, we can see that it's populating this. So that's really the first step is using the surface. Take our geometry, and I'll go ahead and use this ungroup, and transform it or morph it through the surface. And if you notice, if I turn on these control points, and let's say I make uh, these very close together, we'll see that our components are going to get really small here. Right? They're going to transform very tight here. If I take these points and I start to move them forward here, you'll see that they're going to get really tight here. If I elongate this point, right, you're going to see that they're going to get expanding here. So all that transformation is an implicit transformation. It's something that's happening because of the fact that um, the surface is changing. 